Welcome to Dare to Dream. I'm Debbie Dashinger. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And I have a guest who's coming back today. And boy, do I have a lot to share. From when he was on the first time, which frankly was not that long ago, I think it was last year to today. So I'll get into more of that later. And I also want to thank Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. Thank you for believing in Dare to Dream all these many years and for the great work that you do out into the world. If you want to learn more about the workshops that they offer and the facilitations, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com, and they have worldwide classes. So today I've got Dr. Bradley Nelson. First of all, his book, which is bigger, badder, and better than ever, has just been re-released. It is magnificent. And some of the work we're going to be talking about today can actually be found in here where you can learn to start doing this yourself. Well worth it, the emotion code. And have you ever thought about how much your emotions influence your health? My guest today, Dr. Bradley Nelson, is one of the world's foremost experts in the emerging fields of bioenergetic medicine and energy psychology. Through his 20 plus years as a holistic physician, he developed the Emotion Code, a system for releasing the trapped emotions that block mental and physical healing. You can learn more about his great work at the Emotion Code.com. And I welcome you back to the show, Dr. Brad. Thanks, Debbie. It's really great to be back. Yeah, it's great to have you back. And let's start. So people who are, I, I think, like, how can they not be familiar with you? But if they are not yet, then awesome. You're the right show at the right time at the right place to meet him, I think, at a great time on this planet. So you say that emotions are the underlying cause of most physiological, psychological disease. Can you break that down for us? How does that work? How does it correlate? Absolutely. Well, during all the years that I was in practice, I was, uh, I was really obsessed with getting to the bottom of what was wrong with my patients, right? I figured that was my job. Now, uh, because I was practicing as a chiropractor, a, a holistic chiropractic physician, really, I was open to looking at anything, but I didn't have uh, a license to prescribe drugs for people to suppress their symptoms. And I didn't have a license to do surgery on people. So I was left with this dilemma of actually having to figure out what was really wrong with them, what, was, what really were the underlying causes of their problem, whatever it was, whether it was mental, emotional, or physical. And what I found was that uh, we all have emotional baggage. And my patients, no matter how old or young they were, no matter what they were suffering from, uh, they all had this in common, that their emotional baggage was a common denominator for all of their symptoms. And so as time went on, I realized more and more, it became more, more and more clear to me uh, what a devastating effect our emotional baggage has on us. Now to understand what emotional baggage is, you, you have to realize that the, these bodies that we're living in seem solid and three dimensional to us. But the reality is, uh, if you look at your hand, for example, under a big enough microscope and you keep zooming in and zooming in, eventually you, you come face to face with an individual atom. And if you look inside the atom, you see there's really nothing in there but empty space. Mm. In fact, listen to this recently, uh, just a few weeks ago, I read that uh, scientists now have, uh, physicists really, have decided uh, they, to try to help everybody understand how our bodies are really made of energy. They said that if you took out all the empty space inside of our bodies, you could fit all of humanity into a space the size of a sugar cube. Imagine. So we really are beings of energy. And so what happens is when you're feeling an intense emotion, like you're feeling an intense emotion of anger or resentment or frustration or grief or sadness, whatever it is, if that emotion is powerful enough, the energy of that emotion can remain behind or get stuck in the body. We mm -hmm. call these trapped emotions. So when uh, the bully moves away or the divorce is finalized or you quit that terrible job and get a better job, uh, or you get out of the abusive relationship, whatever it is, you may think that all those emotions that you felt that were so powerful in the past are gone and that you've moved ahead and you're in the future now. And uh, the reality of it is we carry that stuff with us. And uh, when we talk about emotional baggage, uh, 
we're talking about something that is very, very real, but that um, most of us really have, have had no conception of, but it is real. Our emotional baggage is real. So a trapped emotion is literally a ball of, ang a ball of whatever emotion it might be that's about the size of a baseball, about the size of a softball. And uh, a trapped emotion is literally, if you can imagine, it's a ball of emotional energy. So in other words, you can have a ball of anger in your body or a ball of resentment or sadness or grief or depression, whatever it might be. And the problem is these trapped emotions, this emotional baggage will really cause two things. They have two effects on us. They affect us physically because uh, when you have a trapped emotion, it creates this distorting. It has this distorting effect on the energy field in your body. So then on, on a continual basis, wherever that emotion is lodged, and these can land anywhere, they will continually distort the energy field. And because that's all our bodies are, is an energy field, uh, when you have that experience, that, that distorting effect long-term, it interferes with all the chemical reactions going on in that area of tissue. Mm -hmm. It interferes with blood flow and lymph flow to some degree. It interferes with the, the flow of energy in that area. And so eventually, this is the reason, see, why so many people have some kind of physical pain or discomfort and the underlying reasons emotional. 90% of all the physical discomfort that people have is actually due to their emotional baggage, which is a crazy thing. But this is what we're seeing all over the world. So the other effect that these emotions have on us is that um, they tend to make you feel that emotion more readily, more easily than you otherwise would. So for example, if you have a trapped emotion of depression in your body from a bout with depression that you went through maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you're more likely to be, uh, you're more likely to fall into that emotion and to feel that and become depressed now than you otherwise would be because literally part of your body is feeling that emotional vibration 24 seven. So that's how these things work. And the emotion code is so simple. Sorry, that was my phone thinking I was talking to it. <laughs> I've had that happen. Siri is very intelligent. <laughs> yeah, too intelligent. Anyway, um, the emotion code is just this super easy, super fast, super simple way of finding this emotional baggage that we have and getting rid of it. And uh, because our emotional baggage causes such, uh, such varied and oftentimes such dramatic effects in how we feel and function and, and create our lives, and because people can find this uh, baggage and get rid of it themselves, and then they experience the changes that happen, that's why this work is, is continuing to explode all over the world, see, because uh, the cat is out of the bag, so to speak. Yeah, meow. So I want to know, here you are a chiropractor, you make this proclamation, even if it's internal, to say, I'm open. I really want to get to the bottom of what's going on and why it looks like this on the outside. And you receive this information. Is this a download? Is this a channeling? Because now that I understand your work and I'm on this side of it, I think it's profound and to make an inquiry like that on whatever spiritual level and then receive that kind of information that can facilitate this degree of change for us out here. What is that? Like, how did that come about? Well, you know, um, when I was in practice, I was learning everything that I could from anybody that I could from ancient texts on healing. Uh, I was really obsessed with trying to help my patients and I was wide open, I was radically open to anything that might help them. So I learned everything that I could and I was also in the habit of, uh, of just taking a, a moment and asking for help from up above. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that, um, that we are not alone here, that there are divine purposes to our lives. We have a father above who loves us and cares about us and wants us to succeed. And, and I learned that early in my life. And so before I would go to work on somebody, I had this habit during all those years where I would just take a moment and just connect and ask God to help me with that person. And so, uh, and there were times, Debbie, during those years when I definitely received really powerful downloads, especially when people, typically it would be somebody would come in to see me and I didn't know how to approach their problem. 
And I would offer this silent prayer. And nobody ever knew that I was praying for them. It was a totally private, momentary pause, you know, just a personal thing. But in response to that asking, there were times when I would just receive this, this avalanche of understanding. You know, it's just an incredible thing. That didn't happen very often. You know, probably, probably I could count all those times on one hand over 20 years, basically. But the rest of the time, uh, it, I was finding out what worked and what didn't. And there were little whisperings that would come to me. You know, usually when, we, when we're asking for help from up above, the guidance usually doesn't come in an avalanche. It usually just comes in thoughts or impressions or ideas that we have that we tend to think are just our own, but they're really coming from outside, from that, uh, that higher source. So that's really where it came from. It was a matter of putting the puzzle pieces together and working with people day in and day out for many, many years. And, um, but I eventually came to realize, okay, this, is, this isn't just for me. This has to really go to the whole world, see? And the beauty of it is that anybody can learn how to do it. And uh, if you want to have somebody else do it, you can. I mean, we have over 5,000 certified emotion code practitioners now in 77 countries around the world. We could start our own UN, I think, practically. <laughs> but, but, you know, you can also do it on yourself. And so you don't have to, you don't have to spend money to have somebody else do it, but you can if you want. If you do work on somebody, does it also change you, even though you're facilitating them? Well, you know, <clears throat> the fascinating thing about, um, about going into this work and becoming a, um, uh, I hesitate to use the word healer because it's so, it's loaded with so many connotations for so many people, but really that's what you're doing is you're learning how to, to help other people in these natural ways. You're becoming an energy healer, really, when you learn how to do the emotion code. And it's the simplest uh, path to becoming an energy healer. And the, the fascinating thing about it is, and this is pretty much universal, everybody that I've ever talked to, um, what happens is as you're healing other people, you are healing yourself. You really are. So there is that, uh, there's that, um, that effect that happens to you, whereas you're working with other people. And there's really nothing more addictive in a good way uh, than helping other people and seeing the positive changes take place for them. I mean, it is just, it's such great food for your soul. It's so satisfying. You sleep so well at night because you know that you're doing something in the world that's making a difference in the world. It's really fun. Wow. Well, I just want to pay homage to you. And I'm so glad that you explained all of that here at the front side. You were on my show last time. I had zero experience of your work with the exception that I had read your book, your prior book. Mm -hmm. And as someone who teaches book writing out into the world, I thought, my God, this book is genius. It's story after story that has become a page turner. And how do you write a self-help how-to book that's a page turner? Not easy and very rare. So from that standpoint, I was very impressed with you. And when you came on the show, Dr. Nelson, I was in a rare way very just compelled to understand more. So after our interview a year ago, year and a half ago, I'm trying to think exactly when it was, um, but I think it was early 2018. So it was, yeah, at least a year and a half ago, I reached out to your team and said, I wanna do this work, I wanna understand it, can I do a session? And I went on your website where you sign up and all of that. And I worked with somebody, so I'm gonna really pull back the curtain so people understand uh -huh. what's possible. And the woman I was working with said, great, what would you like to deal with? And I said, I have the most terrible and bizarre thing happening. I am having panic attacks when I drive. I cannot get on a freeway, and I live in Los Angeles. Oh boy. I have a client in Palm Springs, two, three hours, and beyond. I, the, the experience of going those two, three hours so knotted up, driving 30 miles an hour on a 65-mile freeway, because I really, I thought I was going to die the whole time. Got to the point where I had to tell friends, I'm taking side streets the entire way to your house. That's all. That's the best I can do. And even that wasn't fun. Now, I know enough to understand that in February 2017, I had a big shock in my life. I had a huge breakup of a 10-year relationship, 
didn't go down well, very unexpected and quite traumatic. I understood that I had been driving perfectly all my life and then however many months later, boom, this manifestation of panic attacks. Got it. But I was powerless. So the woman worked on me for 20 minutes. I mean, I'm sitting here in my place and she's asking questions, doesn't need anything from me. My being somehow is communicating. She's zeroing out things on her end and discreating and really has a lot of clarity about some of these issues. And when we were done, uh, she was kind enough to check back in with me a week later. And I said, this is crazy. I'm driving. <laughs> and I want to say that. So I went from complete, utter panic to functional. And then I said, okay, now I'm functional. But I actually want to be like back completely. She said, great, let's do another session. One more 20-minute session. It changed my life. <laughs> Never had an issue again. And have been so enamored with your work and what you've put out into the world. I work with one of your facilitators on a regular basis now about a number of things. Mm -hmm. And I send my clients to your facilitators when they get to a point where there's something they're dealing with that's just, it's too big. It's just too big a blockage. I'm like, great, I know exactly where to send you. You're gonna love it. It's easy, there's not much you have to do. You don't have to talk for nine years. It's gone like that. So, like, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for creating this. Well, you're so welcome. Uh, I just feel that uh, I'm on this mission. I feel like everything that's happened to me, uh, all my experiences in my life. Have, oh. Sorry about that. I thought that was shut down. There we go. But uh, I feel like all the experiences of my life have prepared me to bring this work into the world. And so uh, it's really not about me. Uh, I'm just the messenger. I was just chosen to bring it into the world, but uh, it's not about me. It's about, uh, it's about everybody else. It's about the whole planet. And I just work here. I'm just the guy that, you know. <laughs> You're the conduit. Well, I want to ask you, because I thought this was a really cool way uh, when we started the book, started reading your new book, your new revised um, addition to this book that it starts out by saying that Tony Robbins and, and his wife Sage have become aware of your work, that there are people in their circle who keep saying, wow, Dr. Bradley Nelson, the emotion code, the body code, you know, he's doing great things. And they become so intrigued, they reach out to you. And 24 hours later, you're at the, their house, right. With them. <laughs> right. So clearly, this was a tremendous experience for both of you. Can you share a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I was, in a, uh, I was in a business meeting in Salt Lake City with my wife, and, uh, and all of a sudden uh, I started getting these texts from our publicist who said that Tony was trying to get a hold of us. And I'd never met Tony, but you know, 30 years ago, my wife and I um, were pretty much broke. I'd just gotten out of school, and uh, we didn't know what we were gonna do. And one night we're sitting up in our pajamas watching late night uh, TV and we saw this infomercial from Tony. And so we spent $99 and bought his program. And it was a cassette tape program that you did for 30 days. And we did it. We listened to all the cassettes, did all the exercises. And within 60 days, we were in our own uh, home uh, and we were renting before and we were in our own practice. And uh, we, were, we were working for somebody else before. It was just this incredible shift that happened within two months. And it didn't, that we didn't have to put a dollar out of pocket to do it. It was really an incredible thing. And so Tony has been, uh, <clears throat> he didn't know it, but he's been really one of my mentors uh, and someone that I have always greatly admired. And so it was an incredible thing really to be able to go. And they flew us out all the way to Florida, uh, to Palm Beach where they live the next day and we were able to go in and work with him and, and uh, work on everybody that was there. And we had a, just a great experience. And a lot of people don't know, you know, he's been, uh, he's been having some of these issues, you know, lately with Buzzfeed and so on. And I, I just have a lot of respect for Tony and I, I you know, I appreciate what he's been going through lately. But I think that um, uh, 
my own uh, perspective on that is that um, he's doing an incredible amount of good in the world. He's, uh, you know, feeding a million people a year and uh, he's changed so many lives that um, I think that uh, when you're trying to make a big difference in the world in positive ways, there's always going to be, you know, some resistance to that. So. But yeah, yeah that's an amazing thing. And so, so there you are with him, uh, facilitating him. Of course, I know we won't learn about that because that's very private. But he's so uh, taken with your work that he writes the forward yeah. in the book. Yeah, it was an amazing thing. Um, what happened was uh, his wife had this impression that uh, uh, after kind of hearing about the book, the book had been floating around their house a little bit because one of the people who lives with them actually had the book. And so she'd heard about it a few times. And then, uh, then she heard about it. Someone was telling her about it, that she needed to read it. And she just had this really powerful impression that, that we were supposed to meet them. And so, uh, so that's when they contacted us. And so, uh, yeah, we're good friends with them now. They, um, uh, they're really uh, just amazing people, really, really incredible people, an amazing couple. So uh, it's been fun. We've been to their house quite a number of times. And uh, it, it's funny because it's kind of like we're on – we're on sort of these parallel missions, you know, in a, in a way, because we're trying, like they are, we're, we're trying to help people to maximize their lives, uh, and, and so are they. We're coming at it from different but complementary uh, points of view. So, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a really fun relationship. Amazing. It seems almost prophetic that 30 years ago, you'd watch him on TV and be motivated to use his work. It changes your life. And it's like what goes around comes around. And not only do you end up helping him, but you're in that circle, uh, influencer to influencer. And I just think that's amazing how that works in this world. Well, it was definitely a God thing, I believe. Um, it was, it was really an orchestrated thing. I mean, we had never, we had never dreamed of reaching out, you know, to Tony or his wife or their team. Uh, it was just one of those things that, and on the plane on the way home, uh, you know, they flew us out the next day. And on the plane on the way home, my wife and I remember we were just looking at each other, just thinking, did that really happen? I mean, <laughs> oh, right? yeah. Well, good. I hope you don't have to pinch yourself too much anymore because it's still happening. Uh, you're listening to Dare to Dream Radio podcast, YouTube. You can become part of the Dare to Dream team. You can donate to the show. It takes a lot to keep this engine going and to bring the level of guests and business acumen to this show. And you have a big purpose to fulfill. So I ask, what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? What would you do? And what would it take for you to feel completely free and bold? Dare to Dream is always going to be free to you. And if you'd like to contribute, I'd love to have you aboard. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream for the price of a dollar or a cup of coffee. You can donate to this number one transformation conversation. And I'm going to, Dr. Uh, Nelson, I want to come back to a little bit of what I was saying in, into the idea that 90% of our thoughts can generate a trapped emotion if we're not careful. And um, just to fast forward the homage I was sharing earlier, that when I started working with your facilitator, I also want to give her a little kudos, Rissell Yu, who is brilliant. And Rissell and I purposefully began working on love because I was so whacked yeah. from what had happened. I was clear, like... <laughs> Not on, not, on my, uh, not, on, not on my turf was any energy going to come in. And so I worked with her and really for not that long, I don't know, a couple of months. And then at some point I felt ready to date and I felt so sure, ah, this is going to take a couple of years. I'll go have fun. I went out four times with four <laughs> different, do- yeah, I'm still with him. <laughs> so fourth date, and they were all very pleasant, by the way. They were all lovely, and I felt very confident, and I really felt connected and open, and I was just going to have fun and date. But I met somebody amazing, and I didn't expect that. So I want to say also to heal the heart. I know you do heart walls and things like that, and to 
really open one's being to the full possibilities of life. It's not just about um, ending a trauma, but it's also about blossoming to something magnificent. Oh, it's so true. We have such, uh, such great, such unlimited potential as human beings. But what happens is our emotional baggage weighs us down. And you can think of everybody that you know as kind of symbolically dragging these suitcases behind them full of all kinds of rocks. And the rocks are from their relationships and their abuse and all kinds of things they've been through. And some of those suitcases have uh, rocks in them that are the emotional baggage from their ancestors. And so we're dragging all of this through our lives and we wonder why it's so hard for us to speed up or make progress or ascend or find uh, the right, you know, find our soulmate or create the life we want. And it's because of that emotional baggage. And it's really such a simple thing. And, uh, you know, I've taught seminars all over the world and, and about every other seminar, somebody will come up to me and they'll say, this just seems too simple. <laughs> and and my, my response is, well, I can make it more difficult for you if you'd like, but it actually is really, really simple. Right. I can refund uh, your misery, 100% guarantee. <laughs> so, yes, that's right. You know, the, um, it's not just about our physical symptoms. Uh, it's not just about things like depression and anxiety and phobias and panic attacks and PTSD and eating disorders and so on. It's also about creating that uh, perfect blueprint that is in the heart of each one of us, manifesting that. Because, you know, I, I really believe that each one of us has this best destiny, this, this blueprint that lies within the heart of each one of us that is what our life can really be. And the beautiful thing about getting rid of this emotional baggage is that it, it's like at a certain point when you get rid of enough of that baggage, it's like, it's like stepping out of this old suit that you've been walking around in. And you step out into this new state of being that is who you really are supposed to be, who you started out as long ago. And um, we end up, we're, we're all burdened by all the baggage that we have, but getting rid of it. I mean, the most incredible things people tell us the most amazing things, like for the first time when that baggage is removed, they can feel God's love. They can feel the connection to the higher power. Um, people feel love. I was reading recently a woman in her 80s who had never had a happy moment in her whole life and said that now suddenly with enough of this baggage and especially the heart wall removed, she's feeling this emotion that she's never felt before and she realizes that emotion is joy. I mean, you see, that's what's driving this. There, there's no stopping this. Uh, it's, it's going uh, all over the world really rapidly because this is truth, you see. We're not making this up. We're not, we're not paying people to send us all these thousands of testimonials. This stuff's real. And um, so it, it's a beautiful thing. And it, I have to pinch myself all the time that I'm even involved in this. How I got picked for this, I have no idea. It was probably a mistake, but <laughs> somebody made a mistake, but they... <laughs> yeah, they made a good mistake. Thank you so much. So um, Emotion Code, I want to give people an experience of this work so they can understand viscerally what this is about. And you and I agreed before we started that we would do this. I thought that the one subject that everybody can relate to is abundance, right? Yep. Because there's so many ways that can be manifest out into the world. So I'd love to do some work with you on abundance and everybody can have an experience and also open themselves up to receiving whatever is possible here too. Okay, absolutely. Well, um, so first of all, let me, uh, let me explain how this is done at a distance because for most of us, um, we're used to having to be in certain places to have certain things done. But basically, we're all connected energetically. I mean, if you're sitting on the beach and you're looking out to the ocean and you're, you're looking at different islands, they seem totally separated. But if you were to drain the water out of the ocean, you'd see, oh, I see, those islands, are, they're all really connected. And that's how we are too. So the human body has this incredible ability built right into it to set aside its own needs to act on behalf of someone else. And we call that working by proxy. And uh, so, the way I like to do this and what we recommend for people is uh, if you're going to do this, take a moment and ask for some help from that higher power, whatever you believe. Okay. So we'll do that just for a moment here. All right. And then what we do is uh, we use a little bit of muscle testing and 
we get answers from the subconscious mind. So the method I'm going to be using today is called the uh, ring and ring method. So what I'm doing is I'm making a ring inside of a ring, okay? And uh, my body, as I ask questions, my body will be stronger on yes and it'll be weaker on no. So when you see my fingers break like this, that's a no answer. If they stay together, that's a yes, okay? And so um, the first thing I want to know is, are we connected energetically so that I can ask questions and get answers and I get a yes answer there? So we call this working by proxy. So the first thing that I want to know is, and in fact, let me just grab a little piece of paper here. I can feel you already, by the way. Like, woof. <laughs> okay, this is fun stuff. So, um, so here we go. Let's ask, um, since we're connected energetically, what I'm doing now is I'm asking questions. I'm getting answers on your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind will manifest those answers back to my subconscious. My subconscious then will manifest the answers as either strength for yes or weak for no. That's how it works. It's very high tech, but <laughs> you know, it's really simple. So here we go. Let's ask. Um, uh, first of all, let's ask this question. Are you okay, Debbie, with having a total absolute abundance in your life? And the answer I get is yes. But let's ask, let's come at this from some other angles because we might be able to uncover something. So let's ask, are you okay with other people um, knowing that you have total and complete abundance, I get a yes. Are you okay with having uh, lots of money? Yes. Are you okay with spending lots of money? Yes. Are you okay with hanging on to lots of money? No. Mm -hmm. So you're okay to have it, but you're not okay to hang on to it. So this is the kind of, and I don't know if this is true for you, but what will happen is for lots of people, if your subconscious mind is not okay with you having money and keeping it and so on, then you may tend to go through these cycles where you'll, you'll create abundance, but then your subconscious mind will sabotage it, and then you'll have to recreate it again and over and over. That makes sense? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, well, I've seen that a lot. So, um, pretty common. So, you're not okay with keeping that abundance, okay, or uh, maintaining that. So, let's go now to the emotion code chart. And... Um, uh, if you go to Google, you can just do a search for emotion code chart. There's lots of these out there. It looks like this. Uh, you can, it's a little bit hard to see there, but there are two columns vertically and six rows horizontally. And um, there are 60 emotions in this chart. So what I'm going to do here, um, remember I'm connected to your subconscious mind. I have no idea, but let's ask, is there a trapped emotion that is, uh, that is, that's causing this imbalance that's preventing you from really being okay subconsciously to keep that abundance that you've created and the answer is yes so now we look at the chart and we ask okay what emotion is this is it in column a or column b and your subconscious mind knows and so is it in column a i get a no so we've eliminated half the chart we know it's in column b there are 30 emotions left is it in one of the odd rows in column b in either one three or five and the answer there is yes. So we've eliminated all the uh, even rows. We know it's in an odd row, row one or three or five in column B. Is it in row one in column B? That's a no, we have 10 emotions left. Is it in row three in column B? No, it's in row five in column B. So row five, column B. So we have these emotions. I'll see if I can get this up on the screen. Uh, my camera doesn't seem to be focusing very well, but the emotions are conflict, creative insecurity, Terror, unsupported, and wishy-washy. So let's see what shows up. Your subconscious mind is guiding me here, so it's really simple. Is the emotion conflict? No. Is it creative insecurity? No. Is it terror? No. Unsupported? No. Is it wishy-washy? No. So they're all weak. There were five emotions in that cell, but they're all weak, which means this is what we call an inherited trapped emotion. Now, we inherit emotional energy from mom or dad at the moment of conception, and they, might have, they may have gotten it at conception from their mom or dad and so on. So let's see what this is. Let's ask, is this an inherited trapped emotion? I get a yes. So is it, um, is it inherited conflict? No. Is it inherited creative insecurity? No. Is it inherited terror? It's an inherited emotion of terror. Mm. So the plot thickens. Let's see. So where'd you get this? When you were conceived... That's when you get these inherited emotions. Did you get this uh, at conception from your mom? No, it came from your dad. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. That's... Let me make some notes here. Now your dad got this. Did he get this from somebody earlier? He did. Did he get it from his dad? No, he got it from his mom. So did she get it from somebody earlier? Yeah, from mom, from dad. Okay, so we have father, mother, and then father. And does it go back further? How many generations does this go back? Does it go back five generations? We've already got three. It goes back five at least. Does it go back 10? It does go back 10. Does it go back 15? No. 14? 13. It goes back 13 generations. So that's quite a ways. I mean, if we say 13 generations times about, oh, say 25 years for a generation, that's 325 years. Minus 2019 goes back to about 1694, approximately 1700, we'll say. That's a long time ago. Now, science is bearing out that, uh, that yes, animals definitely pass down emotional trauma somehow. In fact, they found that lower animals will pass emotional trauma uh, or like if something happens that's frightening to them or they have a near-death experience. <laughs> I mean, if they have something that that's, you know, is very frightening or that could be dangerous, they'll pass that memory down. So that if, if a rat that's in a maze has a, something terrifying that happens at a certain point in the maze, you can take a great, great, great grandchild uh, of that rat and at the same point in the maze, it'll freeze. The same point where great, great, great grandpa was shocked or terrified, it'll stop because it knows somehow that something happened. And that's what this is, see? This is emotional baggage. And science is trying to figure out what this is and we're trying to connect with scientists to tell them well, we know what this is. It's, it's this emotional baggage. So did this start with a male all those years ago? This began with a female around uh, sometime around 1700. So now not, I, you have to know that not all emotional baggage, of course, is inherited. It just so happens that we're, we're finding this one. Uh, we never know what's going to show up. Okay. And that's what showed up. So um, Debbie, do you have any kids? I don't, just a fur baby. Okay. Uh, because the reason I ask is because if you had children, it's possible that you might have passed this emotional energy to them. Mm. Now, when we talk about cycles of generational violence and abuse or poverty, this is one of the big reasons why things perpetuate it's because that emotional baggage is handed down. Mm. So I want you to think about this. 13 generations ago, a grandmother of yours experienced something that was terrifying. Now, I would be willing to bet that it probably had something to do with money. And this has been passed down from generation to generation in your family line that there's something about money that can be terrifying. And so it's best not to have it or it's best not to keep it because something really, really frightening might happen to you. Does this make sense? Yes, sir, it does. Can I say something or should Yeah, I? please do. My father is a Holocaust survivor. Mm. And so my lineage by product has been the Jews who have settled into a country, been accepted, and then turned on because they've prospered. And they've yeah. had to grab whatever they could and run for their lives to the next country and start all over again, over and over ad infinitum. Right. Well, there you go. So see, it's, it's uh, very likely back 1700, you know, 1694, whatever year that came up, that's accurate within 10 or 20 years, but she might've been a victim of a pogrom or who knows, right? right. Um, so, uh, so yes, this is how our emotional baggage can affect us um, from our ancestry. Now, the beautiful thing about this is when we release this energy, it will release not only from you, but it will also release from those people, okay, all the way back. And so this is one of the things that we find. So in fact, just, just for fun here, I'll ask this, um, because this always happens. Are these ancestors of yours um, that have passed on, are they actually there spiritually? Are they here with me? Are they there with you? They're there with you. And they're there because they also are holding this baggage. Mm. And um, even though their bodies, you know, have turned to dust in many cases, yet their spirits live on and they still have the baggage. And so they want to get rid of it. So that's why they're there with you. So let's ask, do we need to know anything else about this? I get a no. So to release an emotion like this, what we do is we pass a magnet over the governing meridian, which starts at the tailbone, goes over the top of the head to the inside of the upper lip. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass this magnet 10 times over this governing meridian. And that has the effect of releasing that baggage uh, in the same way that if you were, for example, to uh, take a credit card out of your wallet, okay, if you were to rub a magnet on that magnetic strip, it would render the card uh, ineffective. It would, you'd have to get a new card. It erases the data. And that's what this does. We just erase that data of that emotional energy. So now let's ask, did we release that from you? And we did. Did it also release from your father? It did. And from his mother uh -huh, and from her father and from all of those 13 generations all the way back, including that uh, grandmother of yours that this started with? And the answer there is yes. And so are those spirits there, are they still with you? No, they're not. It's really funny because when we find an inherited emotion like this, these direct line ancestors will, will show up for the release. And then as soon as it's released, they, I don't know, they must be really busy. I don't know what they're doing, but they, they leave right away. So, but every few seminars, <laughs> once in a while I'll go to a seminar and uh, there will be somebody in the audience who can actually see these spirits and it's always the same thing. They always show up and anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there, but um, now let's go back and let's ask that same question again, okay? Are you okay with uh, keeping that abundance? Are you okay with having all of, you know, lots and lots of money and, and wealth and are you okay with keeping that? And I get a yes now. And so see, releasing one energy like that, what it does is it, it can align the subconscious mind much more to what your conscious mind is thinking. See, the secret, I'll tell you something, Debbie, I believe that the, the future of human development is in aligning the conscious mind with the subconscious. Because if your subconscious mind is somewhere over here and it doesn't want what you consciously want, then it's gonna be hard to get it or maintain it. But when you can line up the conscious and the subconscious, then you become unstoppable. So there's an example for you of how this works. <laughs> I, you know, I'd love to know, you know, people you can, if you're on YouTube, obviously you can write comments below and so many of the podcast sites, the radio, not so much, but still you can also email. And just let me know if you also feel what I'm feeling because it's pretty profound over here. I mean, the moment, Dr. Nelson started working with me, I immediately felt his energy in my space, a very positive feeling, by the way, very relaxed and sort of puddled. And then I felt it with the work and with the magnet, Oof, without a doubt, big time. I love that analogy about uh, voiding out your credit card because I've often had the experience of being in a hotel and making the mistake of putting my cell phone too close to the hotel room key. And it always zeroes it out, get to the hotel room and have to go all the way back down to the lobby. So it's, I'll be able to use that forever more with the emotion code, right? <laughs> Completely obliterating all of that and going back to a beautiful neutral. And you know, you talk about underlying causes of disease and that there are six of them. Can you share what those are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, can I share my screen, do you think, for a minute? That would be wonderful, let's see. Yeah, I think I can do that. Let's take a look here. So during all those years that I was in practice, what I found was that uh, there are really six underlying uh, imbalances, or six categories of underlying imbalances that cause all of our trouble. And those are things like pathogens or little infections that get into the body. Um, viruses, bacteria, fungal, mold problems, parasites. There are misalignments, any tissue can misalign. There are imbalances of nutrition, uh, lifestyle. There's toxicity that can get into the body. There are imbalances in the circuitry and the systems of the body. There can be imbalances in the energy field and that's where trapped emotions uh, are. And that's actually, this is a picture of a trapped emotion, artist conception anyway. So, uh, you know, if you'd like to, what we could do is we could maybe do a little more work on you and use this and I can show you how it works. Oh, yeah, that would be fascinating. All right. Awesome. Oh, very so, cool. I just want to say as an aside, when I've worked with people, it's been so one of his facilitators. It's been so remote. I've never seen anyone actually do what you're doing. I've just heard it on the phone. So this is also amazing oh. for me to experience visually. Oh, OK, great. Well, this is what we call the body code. 
And what happened, how this came about really was during those years that I was in practice working with people, I was always trying to figure out what was really wrong with them. And, uh, and it, because I was able to communicate with the subconscious mind uh, and ask really what the problems, the underlying imbalances uh, were that were creating their symptoms, uh, I was able to put this together and figure out that there are really six categories of underlying imbalances. So uh, to give you an idea, for example, this is, a, uh, this is the body code. We sell it now as a self-study course. About a year after the emotion code book, uh, the first version came out um, in 2008, I woke up one morning and my mind was full of instruction. And the instruction was, you need to take everything that you've learned about natural healing and put it into a self-study course that anyone can learn and make it available to everyone everywhere. And that's what this is. So there are, I think, 867 different nodes in here, but it's a, uh, it's a knowledge base. So if we click on something, it'll take us to another map. And so we can, we can dig deeper and deeper into these maps and go into all the different parts of the body. And uh, there's really nothing else like it in the world. It's patented. And um, so it enables us to find these imbalances really rapidly. And um, I used this system exclusively during the last 10 years that I was in practice when most of the people that were coming to see me had been told there was really no hope for them at all, you know, no, no cure available in Western medicine, et cetera. And yet the vast majority of them were able to get well because I was able to figure out what the underlying reasons really were. So in your case, uh, let's just ask, uh, we're still connected energetically, uh huh. so let's ask, um, is, there, is there some kind of an imbalance going on with you that we can release um, and work on? And, uh, and oftentimes we'll, we'll ask about like a symptom or something, but we don't need to do that. We can just ask if there's some sort of imbalance happening that we can fix. I get a yes answer. And so where is this imbalance? Now, I have no idea what we're after, but your subconscious mind knows with a perfect understanding and it's connected to my subconscious. And this is easy. Anybody can do this. So let's ask, um, where is this imbalance? Is it on the right side of the chart? I get a no. So your subconscious mind has something in mind, but it's not on the right side of the chart. It's over here. So is it in the energies area? No. Is it something in circuits and systems? I get a yes. So we'll go here. And when I click on this one, it opens us uh, up to some other things. Uh, chakras, glands, organs, acupuncture system, disconnections, and then all the systems of the body. What is this? Uh, what are we after? Is it on the right side of our chart? No. Is it something in the acupuncture system? No. It's a disconnection of some kind. So... When my wife was sick, um, one of the times that I received this really massive download was when my wife was sick with our youngest daughter, who now is 19, and she had morning sickness, and it was really bad, and she was begging me to help her, and I was thinking of all the things that you know we've tried that, to help with morning sickness. None of those things really work. So I, I prayed about this and said, well, Father in heaven, there's got to be a better way to do this, and I got this answer, boom, and the answer was, well... You'd feel really sick too if there was this new life growing inside of you, especially if your brain wasn't connected to it. Oh, wow. I thought, oh, it's a connection thing. That was the answer. And so then uh, we've been able to figure out how to fix this. So this is probably not your issue. Uh, is, is your issue something on the left side? No. So it's on the right side. Is it that your spirit is uh, maybe out of your body a little bit? That can happen usually from trauma. Um, is it that your spirit and your physical body are disconnected in some way? No. So you have what we call a spirit to spirit disconnection. Okay. And this is really what we often refer to as a broken heart. Okay. So what this means is, um, if you think about this, okay, if you think about your physical body, we've, we've got this physical body and we've got a spirit body too. And uh, if we were to look at your heart beating in your chest, it would probably look like any other woman's heart, your age and your, you know, your height and so on. But if we were to look at your spiritual heart, uh, it might look broken or damaged in some way. And so let's ask about this. Um, is your heart, usually the heart, the spirit heart will split into two parts. And is that what's going on here? Yes. And has it been split completely apart? No. How connected are they? 50%, 30%, 20%, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. So your heart is split into two parts. It's about 80% split. There's about a 20% connection still. 
Now, this is the spirit heart, but this can affect your physical heart, we believe, okay? Mm -hmm. So is there an underlying reason for this? Yes, okay. So what we do is we go back out to the home page, and uh, where is this underlying reason? Is it on the right or the left? It's in the energies area. And is it on the left side here? Or it's actually something emotional. So is this a trapped emotion? It is. And is the emotion in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes. Is it in row one? No. Row three? No. Row five? We're back to column B, row five. Interesting. Is the emotion conflict? Is it creative insecurity? Is it terror? Is it unsupported? So you have a trapped emotion of unsupported. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do we need to know more about this? And the answer is no. So we'll just release this one. But this is, this is an energy that got stuck in the heart that is actually keeping your heart broken, basically. So just, it just takes a few swipes, three swipes of the magnet when we're dealing with an emotion that was not inherited. So now let's ask, um, did we release that emotion? We did. Is your spirit heart still broken? It is. Is there another underlying reason? Yes. Is it a trapped emotion? That's usually, the, uh, usually what we find with a broken heart. Is this next emotion listed uh, in uh, column A? Yes. Is it in one of the odd rows? No. So is it in row two, row four? Is the emotion anger? No. Is it bitterness? No. Guilt? No. Hatred? No. Resentment? Is it your resentment? Okay. Do we need to know more about this one? We do. Um, was this from the breakup? that you described that was what, a couple of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Was it from that? I get a yes. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to know more about it? No. Does that make sense at all? Thousand percent. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do we release that emotion? Yes. Okay. So let me just make a quick note of that one. All right. And um, are there any other underlying causes for the broken heart? I get a no. So let's go back to that for a minute. So there we go. So uh, is, is that heart of yours, that spirit heart still broken? Actually, no. We cleared the underlying causes of that, and now that spirit heart just came right back together again. So, um, so that's the kind of thing that we see in the body code. Just to give you an idea, um, we see things like post-traumatic energies, like psychic, physical traumas, uh, um, inherited things, um, offensive things like you can be corded to your old boyfriend, I and mean, that's why you can't let go, things like that. Uh, somebody might have stabbed you in the back with an energy weapon. That happens. Uh, there can be curses, entities, um, all kinds of things. Um, uh, as far as toxins go, you know, we find things like dental toxicities and cavitations, and there's a whole dental relationship chart in here. And it's, uh, it's an incredible system, really, that is... Uh, it's being used now in one of the top cancer institutes in the world. Um, the, uh, I think I was showing you before how we've got the whole entire skeleton is in here, you know, the ribs and so on. It's all, it's all in there. And the beauty of it is that as you're going through the system, uh, it basically will walk you through and help you to understand, you know, what is going on um, because it's a, it's a knowledge base. And uh, you can even find amazing things like nutrients. Maybe you have a nutrient that your body needs. Well, your subconscious mind knows what you need, and um, it seems to be able to, uh, to find what you need by just using these columns and rows, this little method that's just like the emotion code. So uh, let me ask you, for people who are watching this and they're fascinated mm -hmm. and they have that feeling, I, I really like to work with somebody I know they can go to the emotioncode.com and they can find facilitators. And of course you do workshops all over the world. Do they align with a facilitator and just show up blank and say, look, I know the work is this big physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Can we just start with a blank slate and check me out? Or is it important to come with something very particular as a place to start a jumping point? Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, typically people will have some kind of a complaint that's driving them to get some kind of help, right? But um, but it doesn't really matter. I remember once I had a uh, I had a patient that came to me, and uh, she was sitting in my office waiting. And I came in and I said hello to her, and I picked up the form that she was supposed to fill out, and and uh, she had left all the part about all of her complaints blank, and she said, "I want you to tell me what's going on." And I said, "Oh well, okay, fine." I mean. The bottom line is, you see, 
with the body code and the emotion code, we're not diagnosing anything. All we're doing is we're finding the underlying imbalances that, uh, that ultimately interfere with our ability to manifest total wellness, um, you know, mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's all it is. We just find imbalances. We just work here is all we do. But I can give you an idea. If we go, for example, to, um, let me share one more screen with you really quickly. Uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, this is our website at discoverhealing.com. And uh, on this site, one of the things that you can do, uh, whoops, let me, go, let me go back to that. Here we go. Uh, on discoverhealing.com, one of the things that you can do is you can actually look at the, um, uh, something that we call our practitioner map. Mm -hmm. And we have practitioners on this map that are all over the world, okay? And so, uh, and the nice thing about it is you don't have to work with somebody that's right in your neighborhood. You can work with somebody that maybe, uh, you might find there's somebody in, in uh, oh, I don't know, Romania or Israel that maybe you might want to work with. And as you zoom in on the map, for example, what you'll find is that the, the map will change uh, to show where, uh, where that person, you know, where they are. And so, you know, it just depends. Um, because the work is done at a distance, it doesn't matter uh, where the person is on the planet. Um, and they can work with you. And um, it's, it's really quite, a, quite astounding. But welcome to the 21st century. We're finally starting to realize what we're capable of and, uh, and how powerful we are. And we're just scratching the surface here so far. Really That's amazing. amazing. It really is amazing. Thank you so much for that. And uh, before we get into the last questions with uh, Dr. Nelson, I want to remind you that I have a gift for Dare to Dream watchers and listeners. If you've got a business and you want to put your products up somewhere and make money and scale your business, whether you have 10 students or 10 million, I have a line with Thinkific, which they are brilliant. Let me tell you, if there is a place to be today, that is it. So Thinkific is the place where you can market, you can sell, you can actually even create your courses there or put up the ones that you've already done all in one platform. And I have arranged with them for you to have three months business plan for free. Go to thnk.cc slash Deb, three months free using that to set up your online course or courses, thnk.cc slash Deb. And I'm speaking with Dr. Bradley Nelson, We're coming here to the end. And he reveals how emotionally charged events from your past can still be haunting you. And he offers tools that can remove trapped emotional, physical energies inhabiting the body. He's a holistic chiropractic physician and a medical intuitive. More at theemotioncode.com. I know, um, Dr. Brad, that you have said that forgiveness is the number one thing that we can do to reduce stress in our life. And the dictionary describes forgiveness with words like pardon, exoneration, clemency, and mercy. That mercy, very powerful words, I feel. And as a doctor who heals energy, what is the energy or absolution that forgiveness holds for us? Well, what I have found is that uh, you can't really have peace until and unless you have forgiven whoever it is in your life that you need to forgive. You know, the natural human tendency for us is to withhold forgiveness to someone that's really hurt us because we want to get even with them. We want to punish that person. That's the natural tendency. But um, it's like Lewis Smedes uh, said uh, once that um, uh, forgiveness is like setting the prisoner free only to find out that the prisoner was you, you see. And so, what I have found is that a lot of the time it's the emotional baggage that we have that um, is around that abuse or around that person, whatever they did to us. When we can remove that emotional baggage with the emotion code and get rid of the trapped emotions that we have about that abuse or about that whatever, whatever was done to us or about that person that uh, was mean or whatever, when we remove that baggage, people for the first time are often able to finally, truly forgive from their heart. And you see, the longer I live, the more I realize it's really all about love, see? Mm -hmm. It's all about, 
it's all about love, love for ourselves, forgiveness for ourselves. Sometimes it's hardest to forgive ourselves, right? But it's love. And when we come from a place of love and we truly can say, I love you and I forgive you. And when we can really truly feel that in our heart, that is just such a powerful, powerful place to be. And that's where we want to get to. We want to be able to say, really imagine saying to everybody that you meet, I love you. In fact, here's what I would recommend for you to do and for your listeners to do if you've never tried this. Try this as you're going around, walking around the mall or whatever it might be, rather than looking at people and judging them for maybe what they're wearing or what they look like or how overweight they are or whatever, uh, instead, try this. Try saying to them just silently, I love you. And let me tell you something. The subconscious mind of that person knows exactly what you're saying. And they will, it, it, can, it can really change how, it can change how other people respond to you, but it can mainly change how you feel. You know, um, I learned this little trick not too long ago, actually. And uh, not long ago, my wife and I were going through some stuff and I was feeling really kind of just irritated one day and got kind of upset. And, uh, and I found myself somewhere walking around, kind of looking at people and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try this. And I started just telling everybody, no matter who it was, just people walking by and saying, I love you. And it totally shifted how I was feeling. So I highly recommend it. It's really interesting, really fun. And that's where we want to go, right? Imagine living in a world like that where everybody is sending that message to everyone else, I love you. Wow. Very <laughs> interesting you would say that. And I, I support you 100%. I hope people will try it. I used to use that. And I, I heard that somewhere when I was younger. And I used to be in a corporate job. And I heard to use that. And I used to get so nervous when I was younger and a, and a boss would call me in their office. I mean, today I'd be like, whatever, you know, I'd show up. But back then I was just so nervous yeah. and I would employ that and I'd sit there and look at them. And even though I was all locked up, I'd start to just look at them and hear what they're saying. But in my mind say, I love you. Awesome. I love you. I love you. And just like everything, my whole experience would change. <laughs> And also because I do red carpet interviews for celebrity things, for startup companies. You know, when people get on a red carpet, they're suddenly on camera and they have to deliver a sound bite. Uh, it's a lot of energy for people sometimes to just stay really calm and connected. And that's what I create this amazing circle of love that they are invited into and they know that they're held, they're going to be okay, I'm there for them. And that is the energy I lead with. And I see the result of that in what gets created usually for the client. Mm, beautiful. Powerful stuff. <laughs> Where can people get your book? Well, of course, it's available on Amazon. Uh, it's available in all the bookstores now. Um, you can get it on Audible as, uh, uh, you know, as a, an audio book as well. Uh, so, um, and of course, you can get it on, on our website at discoverhealing.com too. And if you'd like to, you can download the first couple of chapters if you go to emotioncodegift.com. So it, it's all over the place. Beautiful. Thank you for the amazing work you do. And thank you for showing up in the way you did today for the show and for the listeners. I'm so grateful that my path crossed yours and I hope we continue to weave so as we go forward in our lives. Well, thank you so much, Debbie, for having me on. And uh, I wanna thank all of your listeners too for being here with us in this, uh, in this space. And uh, my, my only advice would be to just take a look at this because it is real and you can learn this and there's a lot of healing that needs to take place in your own families with your own loved ones and you can facilitate that. And that's probably why you're listening to this right now. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. So next week on Dare to Dream, Dr. John Martini is going to be here. He's going to be talking about overcoming fear. Very powerful conversation. And you can subscribe to this on the podcast channels as well as youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And of course on the radio. And just know when you subscribe, this comes right into your inbox every week. And please leave us a five-star review so other people who need to hear conversations like the one Dr. Bradley Nelson just offered to us this past hour, they can also be connected with this kind of work. Thanks, and remember the secret to success 
is having the courage to begin in the first place.